Welcome to the Bitcoin Boomer Show. Here's your host, the Bitcoin Boomer himself, Gary Leland. Welcome to the Bitcoin Boomer Show, the place where we talk about Bitcoin. That's all we do is talk about Bitcoin on this show. I'm a boomer. I like Bitcoin. That's why this is the Bitcoin Boomer Show. But this show is for anyone who's interested in Bitcoin. It's not just for boomers. So don't let the name of that uh, turn you off. My great producer, Stephanie, is here. Stephanie, now you had a chance to review. You always see what's going on with the show before we get there <laughs> and our uh, guests. What did you think of uh, Jimmy? What's going to so, happen here? What did you think of him so far? Not that you've met him, but <laughs> from what you've seen. Yeah, it looks like he's had quite a prolific amount of books, like five books from what I've seen uh, on his site. So I'll be really interested in hearing about that. Yes. Um, but I saw that he's on the Bitcoin and the American Dream, the yeah. book you're on. That was a uh, book five of us did. Or maybe it was six of us. But yeah, we all wrote that together two years ago. And Jimmy's the person who put that together. Yeah. Was this your first book? No, no. This was no. like, I think I've done like maybe 19 other books. Oh. Uh, most people aren't aware of that, but they were like for social media, for podcasting. A lot of them were for the sport, sport of fast pitch softball since I coached that and had yeah. a fast pitch TV show and a sporting goods store. So I've had an array of books. But um, yeah, I've, I've written a book or two, but they were not near as good as this book was. Um, but we're going to be with Jimmy in a few minutes. Jimmy is, like I said, a great friend of mine. He's written five books, all of them about Bitcoin. He might have written some other ones, but he's written five Bitcoin books. He's pretty much known worldwide as a Bitcoin expert, and uh, we're going to just get Bitcoin information. Now, I want to make sure you know this book, uh, this, this, this show, is to educate you about Bitcoin. And I'll say this several times through this show, but please share this show with your friends. Help your friends learn about Bitcoin. And if you stumbled onto this show, I mean, if you just were going through YouTube or going through Vimeo or something and you stumbled on this show, please subscribe. And I think you need to hit a little bell even. So please do that. So when new episodes come out, they'll notify you that the new show is out. But uh, week after week after week, we bring nothing but Bitcoin experts in here from all different fields of Bitcoin. We're trying to tell you what the future of Bitcoin is going to bring. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about ETFs. Electronically traded funds, 11 of them have come out in the U.S. China is starting one in next month. I mean, these are taking over the world. So we're going to talk about that, talk about Jimmy's books, and like I said, Bitcoin in general. So we'll see you in just a minute when we come back from these words with our sponsor. And we'll have Jimmy Song on the show. See you in a minute. Grandpa. Why do you have so much Bitcoin? Well, it all started in the year 2023 when I attended a conference called BitBlock Boom. What's BitBlock Boom, Grandpa? It was a conference where people talked about Bitcoin. This was way back when we used something called the US dollar for money. What? Bitcoin wasn't always the world's money? If it weren't for great speakers at BitBlock Boom like Jimmy Song, Adam Curry, and Preston Pish, we'd all be living in pods and eating bugs. Instead, I was able to avoid fiat enslavement and secure generational wealth. F***ing legend. And welcome back to the Bitcoin Boomer Show. I'm your host, Gary Leland. And like I say every week, the purpose of this show is just to educate you about Bitcoin. I'm not selling you any Bitcoin. I don't have any Bitcoin for sale. I'm only buying Bitcoin personally. But we want you to know about Bitcoin. We want you to be educated about Bitcoin. So I bring on guests, many of them are friends, to talk about Bitcoin. And today I have a good friend of mine, Jimmy Song. Uh, Jimmy, welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having me, Gary. Uh, it's great to be on. You know, I was thinking uh, yesterday, I was just sitting there thinking about something. I think back in 2017, when I had the Crypto Cousin show, <laughs> you probably don't even remember that show, um, you were like my third guest back in 2017. So I think, I don't know if you've been on a show since 2017 with me, so I think it's, maybe it's been a long time. No, no, no. I, I've been on this show before. Oh, uh, we, I we, can't we remember. We did that at least, like uh, more recent. Well, I should have gone back and reviewed what we've done here. Now I'm really feeling like a boomer. I don't even, <laughs> I don't even remember that show. Well, I appreciate you coming on again, and please accept my apology for sure. Uh, what's your shirt say? Oh, uh, it says Bloodless Revolution. I don't know if you can okay, see it. Okay, I can see it yeah. now. I can see it. I just there could see go. the top half of it. 
half of the top words, so I was trying to figure that out. But welcome to the show, Jimmy. <laughs> I really do appreciate you coming on the show. For those who don't know, Jimmy is one of the smarter guys I've probably met and definitely one of the, I'd say you've probably written more books for Bitcoin than anyone. I mean, has someone written more than you? I mean, <laughs> you've written a lot of books about Bitcoin. Uh, Antonopoulos has five, so I, I would say I'm at least tied with him, yeah. Well, at the rate you're going, you should pass him next year because you usually seems to me do, <laughs> do a book every year. And I was lucky enough to be able to join Jimmy on a, a book sprint uh, back in uh, last year, I guess, or year before last. I don't even know how long ago it was now, down in Austin. Mm -hmm. And for those who don't know what a book sprint <laughs> is, you basically live in a house with like six other people for a week. And you write a book in a week, working from crack of sun up till early in the morning, which I usually fell asleep, came about two, three o'clock in the morning. But after you spend a week in those conditions with six people, you get to know them pretty good and you get to become pretty good friends with them. And uh, <laughs> that's, that's what I guess was one of the building points of uh, my relationship with Jimmy here. But Jimmy, before we go any further, I guess I've gone about you quite a bit there. Could you give us a, a just like a one paragraph mm -hmm. short bio of who's Jimmy Song for those who may not be familiar with you? Yeah, I'm a, uh, I'm a programmer and I have been uh, for like 20 something years. So I've, uh, I, I'm, I'm first of all, a very technical person. And one of my books, Programming Bitcoin is, very technical. It's uh, it's a lot of code. It's exercises, stuff like that. Um, I've uh, been in the Bitcoin space since 2011, and I've been um, uh, doing various uh, things in the Bitcoin space, um, educating and speaking and writing and doing all kinds of stuff like that. Um, I've also been an expert witness, believe it or not, uh, uh, in a legal court case uh, with regard to Bitcoin. So um, that's what I do. That's uh, that's kind of you know, hopefully that gives you enough of uh, uh, an overview to know that I'm telling you the truth when, it, when when I'm talking about it. So basically, you're saying that you know your stuff, that, that you, you are a Bitcoin expert. Well, you are a Bitcoin <laughs> expert if you were brought into a court case. They had to bring you in as an expert on the subject. Tell What was that about real quick? I'm not familiar with this story. Uh, well, <laughs> Yeah, uh, it, it was a divorce case. I, I, can't, I, I can't talk too much about it. But uh, but there was the, the husband had some Bitcoin. The wife knew that the husband had Bitcoin and tried to get it into the marital estate. And I had to, um, you know, guide both the lawyer and the judge on what was actually going on and how you couldn't just like go seize it. Right. Uh, the judge was asking, for example, uh, can I give a court order to somebody to go get these Bitcoin? I was like, no, uh, judge, that's not how it works. And, you know, okay. uh, it went on from there. Good enough. Good enough. That's uh, that's pretty interesting. So it wasn't anything like, um, you know, Calvin Ayers or anything like that or, <laughs> or Bitcoin SV. I, I wouldn't want to be in those cases. Uh, you know, they, they tend to be uh, some pretty bad people there. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I agree completely. But that just seems to turn out turned out as good as it could. Hey, one question I ask everybody on this show. Uh, what is Bitcoin real quick? To Jimmy Song, what is Bitcoin? Yeah, it's uh, it's decentralized digital scarcity, or uh, you know what what people would call like uh, digital gold. Uh, it has a lot of this, a lot of similar properties as gold in that you know anyone could go and uh, try to find it, right? Like uh, mining for gold or something. You can also mine for Bitcoin um, if you have a computer or whatever. Now, I wouldn't suggest doing that because um, much like digging in your backyard for gold, you're not likely to be successful. Uh, but that that's what it is. It's uh it's decentralized, it's digital, it's scarce, um, and it makes for a fantastic money. It has all kinds of properties that make it ideal uh for uh storing value and transacting and things like that, uh, unlike almost anything else. And it's something that we've never seen before. It's a computer science breakthrough. Um, I could talk more about that if you want, but that's what I, I see Bitcoin as. Well, um so so we covered Bitcoin, but it's something I want to ask that I don't personally understand. And I want you, this is for me, I'm asking, mm -hmm. what is liquid Bitcoin? Uh -huh. Yeah, I know what Bitcoin is, I know what Lightning is, but I'm not oh. sure what liquid Bitcoin is that I've been seeing lately. What What is that about? Yeah, so liquid liquid is a side chain of Bitcoin. And uh, a side chain is basically this idea that you have 
a separate ledger that's different than the Bitcoin ledger. And um, and you can deposit it into it and then you can withdraw from it. But basically, it's a it's a separate ledger that you can be on. Uh, so if you deposit Bitcoin into liquid uh, into the liquid sidechain, you now have liquid Bitcoin. And if you withdraw Bitcoin from the liquid sidechain, you have real Bitcoin. Um, now, like you, you do have uh, a different kind of trust model. Uh, basically, to deposit into it, there's a multi-sig, um, uh, you know, address that you're depositing into. And when you deposit into Liquid, it's a, it's a separate ledger, um, and they have other assets on Liquid, uh, like Tether, for example, which is a proxy of uh, U.S. dollars and many other things. Um, and you can issue your own. It has different properties, among other things, complete confidentiality. So, you know, um, you get a lot more privacy because uh, it's hard to trace and things like that. So uh, it's also got faster block times there on that ledger. It's, uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, one minute blocks. Um, but it's a different trust model because you have to trust the federation that's holding the multi-sig. Oh. So I know Lightning. <laughs> I know, excuse me, Height. I know Lightning and why I would use it. Thing. Is it it's just a competitor for Lightning that um, uh, uses it, multi sig? It, uh, it, it's it's a little different than Lightning. It's a it, it is what you would call a layer two, a layer on top of like uh, of Bitcoin, just like Lightning is. Uh, but the trust model is different. Uh, the properties are different, and you know how it works is different. Uh, and it, it can actually interoperate with uh, Lightning in a very clever way. So if you don't want to pay large fees to open a Lightning channel, you can instead uh, swap into Liquid and uh, you know load uh, load up on a Lightning uh, channel through there and stuff like that. So um, it's not necessarily a competitor, though. In some way, I suppose it is. Uh, but you know, there there's also like synergies between them and so on. So is this a good thing or a bad thing in Jimmy's opinion? I think it's a good thing. Um, you know, more choices, more competition is almost always good for any economy. Uh, and you 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 have the ability to choose, you know, what network you use, what trust model you want to use and so, stuff like that. Um, you know, there, there are other L2s too, like uh, Fediment and, uh, you know, there's uh, state chains. Um, and uh, I think, uh, what's that new one? Uh, I think... Yeah, there, there, there's some other ones. Um, I can't remember the name of uh, Arc. I think it is actually. Yeah. So you you have a bunch of other choices for layer twos. So this is to sort of uh, make it more of a transactional uh, currency, if you uh, if you want speed. Well, I had been seeing um, that coming up in my feed, liquid and stuff. And the other day, I downloaded the Aqua Wallet, and with that, I could send Bitcoin, Lightning, or mm -hmm. Or liquid. And I was going. I got to figure out what the hell this is. I'm kind of getting getting left in the dark here. <laughs> but we're going to take a break. Uh, we'll be back back after this word from our sponsor. So please stay tuned. Welcome to the Bitcoin Conference Challenge. Today, we're teleporting Bitcoiners like you to two different Bitcoin conferences, and you'll get to experience them firsthand. Let's take you to Conference A. Hmm, it's okay. Some interesting speakers and workshops, but there's a foul odor in the air. What is that smell? Interesting. Now let's take you to Conference B. Wow, this one is amazing. The atmosphere is electric, the speakers are great, and the workshops are fantastic. Ah, and the smell. It's so nice to fill your lungs with freedom. Congratulations! You've just experienced the difference between a Bitcoin shitcoin conference and BitBlockBoom, the longest-running Bitcoin-only conference. Book your tickets today at BitBlockBoom.com and use the code BBB1 for a special discount. And welcome back to the Bitcoin Boomer Show. Today we're joined by Bitcoin expert and uh, someone I consider a good friend, Jimmy Song. Um, Jimmy, I, I want to ask you a question right now. We're about maybe 10 or 11 days into um, 11 Bitcoin ETFs having been launched, um, which seem to be buying a lot of Bitcoin from what I can figure out, uh, from what I can see. What, mm -hmm. are your, what are your thoughts on Bitcoin ETFs just in general? Is it good for Bitcoin? Is it bad for Bitcoin? Does it not matter for Bitcoin? Because Bitcoin is just going to do its thing no matter what you do. 
Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, clearly this, uh, it does increase demand. It probably um, makes it easier for people like the folks watching this show to uh, get some exposure to it and so on. Uh, but, you know, I mean, it's, uh, I, I'm always a little bit skeptical of financial markets, uh, just because in a fiat economy, you have a lot of um, weird games that get played. So, one of the uh, odd things that you can do with ETFs is you can naked short it, essentially, um, which means that uh, some some entity can come in and you know short it for lots and lots of um, shares and essentially kind of increase the supply. Um, so there there are games that can get played, which I'm a little bit more worried about than say the uh, straight up buying and so on, but. Yeah, I, I, it remains to be seen. I haven't made up my mind whether or not it's good or bad for it. I just see it as something that has happened, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll like time will prove whether or not it's a good thing or a bad thing. I do know there are a lot of Bitcoin going into there for sure. Um, you know, so mm. like I said, you know, I was talking to my brother-in-law, and he wanted to get into Bitcoin. He wanted to put some money in Bitcoin, but he was not wanting to pull out of his retirement funds because he didn't want to pay the capital gains and take that loss mm. to go put it into Bitcoin, which kind of made sense to me. I mean, not kind of, it made sense mm. to me. He didn't want to take that hit. Mm -hmm. He's not that positive about Bitcoin that he wants to take a hit and then go put it into a volatile asset. So for someone like that, I could see where they would feel much more comfortable having a having a piece of Bitcoin as they would feel, even though they don't own actual Bitcoin. So I, I do see where that would be a plus. Mm. Um, but I'm not sure if anything else is a plus. Yeah, that that could be a plus. Yeah, um, but, but uh, that that could be a plus. But there there are if uh, your brother-in-law wants to avoid that, you could do a self-directed IRA and uh, Unchained Capital, for example, um, lets you do that, where you can, you know, uh, basically um, buy Bitcoin using your IRA and keep all of the tax benefits that would uh, that would normally accrue with it. So instead of taking that hit, you you can actually own real Bitcoin, like self custody Bitcoin, um, using a self directed IRA. Uh, there's more information at onchain.com. Uh, but there there's uh, also the possibility of you know like buying the ETF. Maybe that's a little easier for your brother in law. So. Uh, it could definitely be useful for that. And, um, but I, I do want to point out that there are other options. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. I, I, when I think of buying, doing the IRA, I think of just putting some money in there. But you could transfer money from his existing IRAs into that IRA, right? Mm. Yeah, that's, uh, that, I, I believe you can convert uh, any 401k or whatever into an IRA and not take a tax hit. Yeah, I didn't even think about that, even though I do have Bitcoin IRAs. That, <laughs> even though I do have some, I didn't even think about that. Hey, I want to talk about your books real quick. Uh, as I stated earlier mm -hmm. when we started this, uh, Jimmy is a one of the top Bitcoin. I'd have to say one of the top Bitcoin authors. I can't think of any time I have seen you at a conference signing books that you didn't sell out or almost sell out. I mean... I think at BitBlock Boom, <laughs> you must have had to go home to get more books you did so good last, last year. So I'm going to say a pretty popular mm -hmm. art uh, author in the Bitcoin world. Well, let's, let's go through some of your books real quick. Um, your first, you've got five, as we said mm -hmm. earlier. Your first book, Programming Bitcoin. Um, tell us about that book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I wrote that book, um, I guess, due to my frustrations as a programmer in the Bitcoin space. And I've been programming in it for 11 years now, starting in 2013. And uh, back then, there just were no resources. And, uh, you know, I had to go find whatever documentation I could find online and so on. And it was very difficult. And I was very frustrated that there wasn't anything to sort of help ramp up developers into being able to code Bitcoin stuff. Um, and then later on, as I got deeper into the Bitcoin space, um, I, I found that, you know, trying to hire people uh, for these roles was actually quite difficult because they didn't know about all, a lot of this stuff. Um, and, you know, same problem, basically, there, there wasn't good educational materials for it. Uh, and so I, um, you know, I wrote the book as a way to 
help uh, you know relieve the pain that I felt uh, in learning and you know for a lot of companies as well, Bitcoin companies as well and helping them train up some of their developers. So that's that's why I wrote it. And uh, you know it's uh, it's uh, if you're a technical person, you'll recognize very right away that it's uh, it's meant to be read almost chapter by chapter, and there's exercises. It's it's very much a teaching book, and um, and that's that's what I aim to do. Well, for for anyone who is looking at the book cover, it has a honey badger on it. And in case you're not a Bitcoiner, you probably don't realize that a honey badger is used as an example of Bitcoin's power for a while because a honey badger can take on almost anything. And Bitcoin can handle almost anything mm. and take it on. So Bitcoin is considered by many to be like a honey badger. You just can't, you just can't stop it. Now that that does um after after that book though, programming Bitcoin, then you started your route down a series of um Bitcoin books where you did them with people, starting with uh, Thank God for Bitcoin, mm -hmm. um, doing book sprints, or I guess. Little was, Bitcoin book. Oh, Little Bitcoin books next? Okay. The Little Bitcoin book was the first. Okay. Oh, yeah. And so let's, let's talk about the Little Bitcoin book, because it is a Little Bitcoin book. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, uh, we we wrote that. That was my first experience uh, doing a uh, book sprint, and I, I really wanted to write something much quicker because uh programming bitcoin took me over a year to write and uh and that was a little bit discouraging to me but i i talked to other authors that uh with my publisher that were with my publisher and they told me that it took them like two years and that i was actually pretty fast in doing it in a year I, and I thought to myself like okay there there has to be a better way why why is everything taking so long and uh, at, at this conference I went to, this guy had this presentation, how to write a book in a week. And I went and I learned about some of the book sprint uh, principles and stuff and kind of designed my own process. And I had this idea for a while until um, uh, when Alex Gladstein approached me about being a technical reviewer for a book he wanted to write. Um, and I... I uh, and he, that he wanted to write with one of my other co-authors co on that book, um, Alex Lloyd, and they they uh, they were trying to convince me to uh, you know review their uh, the book that they wanted to write, and I I basically convinced them back, hey, let's just write a book together, and we could do it very quickly. Um, and we did end up doing that. We we stayed in a house in California. Uh, we we uh, were there, I think, five days, and uh, and we got the entire thing done basically in those five days, which is kind of a crazy and incredible thing. Uh, but you know, uh, like you were describing, Gary, it's uh, it's kind of like uh, we we won a championship or something, where we're all kind of like bonded together now, uh, having been authors. That that was about five years ago, uh, and it was uh, it was the first book that. You know, I wrote in that manner, um, and the eight of us, um, you know, had a great time doing it. Uh, we felt like it was a book that really did, um, like, get people from zero to one. Like, if you don't know anything about Bitcoin, you can pick up this book, read it, and kind of understand uh, what what it's all about and the uh, implications of it. With the, that book, to me, if you want to share Bitcoin with somebody or help educate them, or if, or if you're just sitting going, I want to know what Bitcoin is. This is a book that you could basically read mm -hmm. on a flight. I mean, you know, maybe by the time you went from here to, mm -hmm. to New York, you might be pretty much through with a, quite a bit of it and have a, a real good understanding of what Bitcoin is. So um, I think that's one of my recommended books for mm -hmm. orange pilling someone is the little Bitcoin book. So we're going to take a word from our sponsor now. But we'll be right back after this word, so stick tuned because we have some more books to go over and some more questions to go over with our guest, Jimmy Song. See you in a minute. Because it's like it's like Mecca for Bitcoiners. Like everybody here is like part of the hardcore like inner sanctum. Um, you just have these conversations with everybody where like you can see it in their eyes that they believe the same things that you believe. Come to BitBlockBoom once, you're going to come every year. And welcome back to the Bitcoin Boomer Show. Before we bring on back on our guest, I do want to ask you to do your friends a favor. 
If you know anyone who's interested in Bitcoin or learning more about Bitcoin, please share this show with them. This is a great way to find out about Bitcoin. And next time you're around the water cooler or talking with friends and someone brings up Bitcoin, you'll be able to join the conversation and have somewhat of an idea of what we're talking about. So please share this show with your friends. Jimmy, welcome back to the show. Now, we went over programming Bitcoin. We went over the Little Bitcoin book. Like I said, I think Little Bitcoin book's a great book for starting someone out on the road to Bitcoin. Now, the next book would be Thank God for Bitcoin. Um, give us a rundown uh, mm -hmm. info on Thank God for Bitcoin, in which, which I might tell the audience, Jimmy's a big Christian. And usually, many times, has done um, activities during Bitblock Boom, uh, Christian-related activities. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. <laughs> so tell us. About yeah, that. Uh, I am a Christian, and uh, and that this is an intersection that um, that I, I think is not intuitive to a lot of people. They see Bitcoin sort of as an investment, and they don't really see it intersecting with anything moral, uh, morally related or religion related, but. Uh, but I am a Christian, and I wanted to orange pill, I guess, the Christian community. Um, uh, the actual book came out of um, a Bible study that I was doing with some Bitcoiners during COVID. Um, as you know, there, uh, you know, you couldn't really go out, and uh, we started sort of meeting online uh, once a week uh, to, you know, study some uh, some some stuff related to Bitcoin and the Bible. So we read two books, uh, The Ethics of Money Production by uh, Your Guido Holzman and uh, Honest Money by Gary North. Um, both, uh, one, one is Catholic, the other is uh, Protestant uh, Christian. Uh, Gary North was actually a, an economic advisor to Ron Paul, and he's written a lot of uh, uh, homeschool curriculum. But that uh, that's what we studied. And... Uh, and a lot of the ideas for, uh, you know, thank God for Bitcoin came from those two books. Uh, the, but the thing about both books is that uh, they didn't have any sort of like hope at the end. It was all, hey, we need to reestablish the gold standard by putting a political action committee together and, you know, overturn this. And all of us that were, you know, reading it were just like kind of groaning and saying that that's not going to happen. Like that's that's, you know, it's it, there's no political momentum for that. Uh, and we wanted to present sort of like a different ending and a different vision uh, so that we we ended up writing Thank God for Bitcoin. It is written specifically to Christians and it makes essentially a biblical moral case for Bitcoin, uh, more really about like the evils of fiat money and central banking and all that uh, from a moral perspective, which honestly, most uh, most Christians don't think about. Um, and that's that's something that we wanted to point out in the book. Um, and yeah, that that one was also kind of a book sprint process, uh, but it was during COVID, uh, like like early on in COVID. So what we had to do was um, was uh, you know sort of do weekly check ins and do stuff like that. So it took us like a few months to do, uh, but you know that's that we wrote it. I think in uh, 2020, uh, to, and we published it towards the end of 2020, um, and it was uh, you know it. It's done really well. Uh, it's definitely connected with a lot of Christians, um, you know, uh, and yeah, it's it's been great. Well, that's thank God for Bitcoin. And then we're going to roll into mm. uh, Bitcoin and the American dream, which, as I said earlier, mm. I was fortunate enough to be involved with that. And that really turned out to be quite uh, an event. I mean, we went to uh, Capitol, toward the Capitol with a senator, the book release um, in D.C. I mean, this turned out to be quite an, uh, a thing here. So let's talk about uh, Bitcoin and the American dream. Yeah. Uh, so th this came out of uh, some... Uh, politics discussions that we were having at the time. Um, I, I still remember uh, meeting Senator Cruz, uh, Ted Cruz from Texas, uh, on Zoom with some uh, some other Bitcoiners, and we were uh, trying, basically, uh, getting him up to speed on uh, on uh, you know what Bitcoin is and stuff like that. And there was uh, uh, right around that time we had, we had scheduled this meeting months in advance, and uh, you know he he kind of understood that this was a big um, <clears throat> thing for his constituency or starting to be, and so on. Uh, so we were meeting with him, and um, 
And just like a week before, they put in a clause into an infrastructure bill that would have like destroyed mining. Uh, and and we were telling him about it. And, and basically, he asked us a question, which I really didn't expect, but makes sense when you think about it. He goes, OK, what do you want me to do? Right. Uh, do you want me to file an amendment? Do you want me to vote against it? What do you, what do you want me to do to remedy this? And we didn't actually have a very good answer. Right. Like uh, politically, like there, uh, this is like the reality of politics is if you want to, you know, uh, defeat something bad, you, you have to have like actual policy recommendations for a lot of these politicians. And th this was something that was a, a a little bit of a weakness in the organization that I, was, I, I I'm still kind of involved with at, at the time was, OK, you could talk about Bitcoin to these people, but unless you give them sort of resources to understand what what's actually happening, you know, they they're kind of frozen. Right. They they want recommendations from you on like what what to do and how to think about it and so on. Um, and, you know, typically when you meet with somebody at a Senate office or a congressional office, you want to leave something behind so they, they have something to study. And that that's where the idea for this book came, is that a lot of our leaders actually don't know anything about Bitcoin. They don't know how to think about it. Uh, they think it's a bunch of computer hackers online that are like do, doing stuff. And as you know, Gary, like it, that's that's not it at all. And that's that's not what the this constituency is about. And we wanted to point that out in this book. And so, uh, you know, we we organized um, this book spin. Uh, a lot of the people that were on that call, uh, like CJ and Amanda, uh, you know, ended up uh, helping with the book. Uh, you know, we, we tried to adopt different perspectives. So we made sure that there were Republicans and Democrats and Libertarians and Independents, um, you know, like boomers like yourself. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm Gen X. There were some millennials in there. Uh, you know, there was, uh, you know, I'm obviously Asian, you're white, there's a couple of black people in there. Um, and CJ's wife is Hispanic, stuff like that. So we, we got a lot of different perspectives to sort of show the people that were would be reading this uh, policymakers, people that are interested in politics, and so on, like who these Bitcoin people are, because a lot of them uh, think it's just sort of like young libertarian men uh, that are into computers. And certainly that's a that's a contingent that is into Bitcoin, but it's also a lot of people that you wouldn't expect, like veterans and, uh, you know, black people and, you know, uh, stuff like that. It, it, it's it's uh, it's a very different perspective. And we have policy recommendations in there uh, so that like, uh, you know, anyone, any of the congressional staffers that we've been giving these stuff, uh, th this out to like would read it and say, OK, this is what they want. Right. Like uh, not. You know, even if you're a, you're not pro Bitcoin, even like Elizabeth Warren staffer could learn something about this and, uh, you know, come away with like a more accurate assessment of who Bitcoiners are. Well, you know, speaking of that, when we went to D.C. and did the book release, mm -hmm. we had uh, Senator Lummis mm -hmm. there. We had Senator Booker staff there. Mm -hmm. um, we had quite a few people there mm -hmm. who were involved in politics. Uh, that um, were there for the book release. And then we went basically through the halls of Congress passing out the book to anyone we could find. It was still during COVID, so there weren't a lot of people there. So it was kind of hard to give them out. But boy, that was, um, now just going into something personal, that was like the opportunity of a lifetime to go tour the Capitol when nobody's there. I mean, literally, we would be in a rotunda and there was nobody in there but us five or six. It was that not many people get that opportunity. And so I do want to thank you for well, I, I, what, 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 you, I, 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 you me, brought me, me on. Saying, like, uh, you're, you're kind of underselling it even because <laughs> we got to go on the Senate floor. Oh yeah. Right, and see the desks where like every, like senators from hundreds of years ago, like sat and stuff like that, that, that to me was like, it was a Friday. They weren't in session, but, you know, they uh, and Senator Lummis thought that we wouldn't be able to go. Test. It was it was great. Hey, we'll be right back with more Jimmy Song in a minute.
and welcome back to the Bitcoin Boomer Show. Oh, I'm a Bitcoiner and I'm a boomer. That's why this is the Bitcoin Boomer Show, not that this is just for boomers. So welcome back to my guest, Jimmy Song. Yeah, now, Jimmy, we're talking about Bitcoin and American Dream and that tour. You're right. The Senate floor. I mean, like I said, you could not get a tour. You couldn't pay for a tour like that. I mean, say, hey, I want to go in there. And I remember we were in the rotunda. I don't know if you remember this. And some security guard came up to us and said, you guys got to get out of here. No tours allowed. And then uh, Senator Lemus's aide goes, not even for a senator? And he said, oh, oh, sorry. Sorry. And he just kind of walked away. So we, we, had full, we had full run of that place. You know, I was kind of, well, I wasn't concerned, but I, I figured I should have been concerned. Um, cause yeah, you know, once someone showed me how to get to the the restroom, you know, and stuff, about an hour later, I had to go to the restroom. So I said, I'm going to go to the restroom. And everybody in the staff just said, okay, do you know where it's at? I said, yeah. So I just went over the elevator, went up a floor, went to the restroom. Then later, something happened, and not the insurrection stuff, but something happened with someone getting into the mm-hmm. Capitol and knocking on doors, a comedian or something. And they were talking about how that was illegal to be unescorted anywhere in the Capitol. And I go, oh my gosh, I was, good thing it was empty that day, or I might have been ended up in jail for trucking around. <laughs> but no, and this is also, just so anyone know, a great book that's also, you could pretty much read it or consume it on a flight if you want to learn about Bitcoin or Orange mm-hmm. Pill, someone in Bitcoin. This is a great, a great book to get people. And I'm not saying that just because I was involved with it. Now your newest book, <laughs> Fiat Ruins Everything. And before we get into that book, because I didn't know this term until I got into Bitcoin. I, I didn't know the term fiat at all. So what is fiat, first of all, for anyone who may not be a Bitcoiner and just as he had never heard of that word? Yeah, so it comes from Latin. Uh, fiat means like, let it be done, something like that. And it's a verb. Um, but uh, since it's like uh, sort of let it be done, sort of someone declaring something, uh, it's been used as an adjective in uh, in English as a way to describe something that is done by decree. So, um, so uh, uh, you know, King says, you know, let uh, let there be uh, you know some sort of uh, administration to handle taxes, something like that, or let there be some kind of you know grain tax or something. Uh, that would be a fiat uh, fiat. Um, done by fiat, by decree, uh, rather than uh, by, you know, some sort of uh, bottom-up approach or something like that. Um, When we say fiat money, uh, we mean it's money that is created by decree. Um, And that's what all money in uh, society today, basically, is. It's, uh, you know, the US dollar, the euro, the yen, the renminbi, whatever. All of them are uh, are fiat money. They're uh, decreed into existence rather than um, something like gold, which is uh, found in nature and create uh, not created, but uh, essentially found. So um, when we say fiat, uh, that's what it means. It's uh, it's something by decree and fiat money specifically is money created from decree. Okay, so the book is Fiat Ruins Everything. We know what fiat is now. Now tell us tell us about the book. Because it uh, does seem to ruin everything. All fiat eventually goes to zero throughout all of history. <laughs> so it does ruin everything. So can you tell us about this book real quick? Yeah, so it, it's a book uh, describing sort of the evils of fiat money. And uh, and the audience for this isn't necessarily people that don't know, uh, don't know Bitcoin. It, it's actually aimed more at Bitcoiners, uh, people that are already into Bitcoin. Um, and fiat ruins everything is just going through all the different ways that fiat money has ruined um, all kinds of societal things uh, from morality to, uh, you know, science and education and, uh, you know, a lot, lots, you know, we could we could go into like the dollar hegemony, the global, uh, you know, military industrial complex and stuff like that. But it's it's a, a lot of fiat ruins a lot of things. Um, and. I wanted to point out uh, how the incentives change in all those places, and it's a uh, it's a fairly long book. Uh, I wrote it during my year abroad, and you know I got a lot of insight by um, by talking to people at different Bitcoin meetups in a lot of different countries. Um, some in hyperinflating places like uh, Argentina and Lebanon. Uh, some that are pretty close, like in uh, um, 
Turkey and Egypt and so on. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a book talking about what fiat actually ruins and sort of going through an analysis of uh, how it's how these things get ruined. Well, I just downloaded it on Audible. So I'm getting ready to enjoy it as soon as I finish uh, about two hours I have left on a book I'm already listening to. So that's my my next book in my list. So I'm excited to go about that. Let me ask you a question. You were touring the world, basically, with your family. I kept seeing you mm-hmm. at the Coliseum, and I think mm-hmm. I saw you at Michu Picchu. <laughs> I mean, uh, so you said you were writing the book while you were uh, touring the world. When you were doing this, did you run into a lot of Bitcoiners? Or any Bitcoiners? Well, I, I uh, sought them out. Yeah, I, I, I sought them out. So yeah, of course, I, I, I encountered them. There, there's always like meetups and stuff. And before I go to a country, I'd be like, hey, like, if you want me to speak, you know, I'm happy to come. And most of them were very happy to have me speak to, you know, whatever meetup. And uh, a lot of them would like, uh, you know, give me tours of the city or give me tips or whatever. And you know, many of them would like uh, exchange money for me. For example, um, I, I'd ask them, uh, like, I would need local currency. I'd change my Bitcoin for the local currency. They were only too happy to do that uh, a lot of the time, uh, and it, it, it was great because um, uh, you know, they, you you get to know like the things that you need to do in a particular city and so on. And uh, and there there are Bitcoiners all over the world, like uh, Lebanon. We uh, I had dinner with a whole bunch of them and. You know, they all had like lots of currency in their like sort of fanny packs that strap across their body because that's where they keep all their currency. Um, you know, stuff like that. Uh, and, you know, the, it, it was great. Um, and they're all over the world. Like literally almost every place has a Bitcoin meetup somewhere. I found this to be true on my last trip to Europe last year. We went to Barcelona, met Bitcoiners, Portugal, someone spent a whole day with us giving us a tour that we wouldn't have never seen the things that they showed us. So Bitcoiners are great. Um, Before we go, we got a little bit of time. How can people find you, follow you, uh, get more information about Jimmy Song, find your books, whatever? Yeah, I mean, you could go to that link that's uh, showing below, vita.page slash Jimmy Song. That has uh, links to almost everything, including all of my books. Um, and you can buy them on Amazon and so on. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, that that's a good as place as any to go find all of the stuff that I do, including my newsletter, podcast, and everything else. Well, you have been into Bitcoin for a long, long time. How did you find out about Bitcoin real quick? What was your, we only have like a minute and a half, but real quickly, what, how did you find out about Bitcoin? Well, I, I'm a I'm a programmer, and there was a tech website called Slashdot where I saw a story that said, uh, you know, internet only currency Bitcoin reaches dollar parity. That was uh, the title of it, and still remember it. It was uh, February of 2011, so 13 years ago almost. Um, and that that's where I found it, and um, and I fell down the rabbit hole real quick, and I've been in it ever since. Been in it and been in it in a big way, for sure. Well, Jimmy, I want to thank you for taking the time to come on this show for the second time. I'm still embarrassed about that. <laughs> and uh, for, for everything you've done for Bitcoin, um, I really do appreciate it. And uh, if uh, I have you on a third time, which I'm sure I will someday, I won't forget these first two. So, so that won't happen to me again. I'm still embarrassed about that. But do everybody... Go check out Jimmy's book. I highly recommend all of them. If you're not a programmer, you might want to miss out on programming Bitcoin. Uh, it is a thick book with a lot of coding information in there. But the rest of them are just excellent, excellent books that give out great information. And uh, I would start with one and work my way through them all if I was you, because I certainly have. And I can't wait to hit Fiat Ruins Everything. So uh, stay tuned. We're getting ready to go through a break from our sponsor. So stay tuned for these words from our sponsor, and we'll see you back here in about 30 seconds or so. So we'll see you in a minute.
and welcome back to the Bitcoin Boomer Show. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Jimmy. Jimmy is, uh, like I said, one of the smarter people I know and a really great guy. And like I said, he's written a ton of books. Stephanie, what did you think of our conversation today? Let's give us your thoughts. Um, I really enjoyed Jimmy and it was really cool to hear y'all's like behind the scenes stories regarding like visiting the Capitol and like what you said, like going to the restroom and essentially being unescorted. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. How was I to know this again? They shouldn't have let me go. <laughs> when peeing was a crime. And yeah. Unescorted. That'd be a heck of a deal if I ended up in the Washington DC jail, yeah. you know, for going to the bathroom. Well, yeah. that's the, the other half of the American dream is peeing uninterrupted, <laughs> unescorted. You know, also, business. also that day for lunch, Senator Lummis took us into the Senate cafeteria uh -huh. and we were only people in there. Was there good food? Oh, it's great food. They have like a private menu of steak and all kinds of I stuff. Like I mean, it was an excellent menu of food. <laughs> so they got it pretty good in there, I do have to admit. But uh, yeah, that was an exciting, <laughs> that was a fun time. Hey, before we go, I do want to remind everybody about my Bitcoin conference, BitBlock Boom. That's in Dallas, Texas this year in April. So if you're interested in Bitcoin, I don't care where you're at on the planet, check out bitblockboom.com. I think two years ago, I had more people from Europe than I had from Texas. So this isn't a Texas thing. Also check out my local meetup group. Uh, we usually do a meetup once a month in the Dallas area. That's meetup.com slash bitblockboom, meetup.com slash bitblockboom. So check that out. We also have satscardshop.com, satscardshop.com. This is a place to buy sat cards. Now, sat cards are a great way to give Give Bitcoin as a gift. Do you want to give someone Bitcoin as a stocking stuff or as a birthday present? Whatever. This is a card for putting Bitcoin on and gifting to people. So do check out satscardshop.com. Also, keep up with what I'm doing. Keep up with what I'm posting. Keep up with future episodes of the show even. Just go to twitter.com slash Gary Leland. That's twitter.com slash Gary Leland. That's where I post everything I post. I'm always on Twitter. You can always reach me on Twitter, as a matter of fact. If you want to send me a message, just go there and message me. I'll reply. I'll get into a conversation with you. I'll try to help you if you need some help. That's really it for today's show. Um, you, uh, As always, I do want to say, please share this show with your friends. I know I've said it a couple of times, but we want to help educate the world about Bitcoin and this is a great place to learn something. We have great guests on here. So until next week, this is Gary Leland saying stack those sats. See you later. <laughs> <laughs>